Welcome to 8th episode of Neuroanatomy series. Today we are going to learn about Neuroglia. As I said earlier that every body system has some functional cells and some supporting cells. Functional cells have the function that is the function of that system. And the supporting cells are in the support of those functional cells. They have many duties other than the key function of that system. So, neuroglia are the supporting cells of nervous system. They are smaller than neurons and these are not excitable cells. As we learned about the neuron, it is an excitable cell that can initiate and propagate the impulse and can communicate with another neuron. But this is not the case with the neuroglia. Instead of that, they outnumber the neuronal cells. They are much more in the number than the neuronal cells. They make up up to 50% mass of brain and spinal cord. There are four neuroglia of the CNS, epidermal cells, microglia, oligodendrocytes, and esterocytes. We will learn all of them one by one. Let's start with sterocytes. Sterocytes have small bodies and the processes that extend in all directions and it gives them a star shape. And their name is derived from their shape. The cells that are like star. There are two types of sterocytes. Fibrous sterocytes and protoplasmic sterocytes. This is a fibrous sterocyte. As you can see in the picture, the process is long, smooth, slender and not much branch. They are found in the white matter. As I mentioned in the video regarding neuroanatomy of the brain that the white matter mostly contains the processes of the neurons or the exons of the neurons. So their processes pass between the exons of the neurons. This is protoplasmic sterocyte. Processes are shorter, thicker and more branched than those of fibrous sterocytes. These cells are found in gray matter. So their processes pass between the neuronal cell bodies because the gray matter mostly have cell bodies in it. Now the question arises here why they have to pass through the nerve fibers or the neuronal cell bodies because the sterocytes make the brain framework. You can see in this picture the cells in the green are sterocytes. These cells with their branching processes form a support and framework to the nerve cells or neurons. They also serve as electrical insulators preventing exon terminals from influencing neighboring but unrelated neurons. There are also barriers which limit the spread of neurotransmitter substances which are released as synapses. But their main function is making the framework of the brain. Many processes of sterocytes end in expansions on blood vessels that are called prevascular feeds. This provides structural integrity through cerebral vasculature and control the vascular physiology. They also act as phagocytes by taking up degenerated synaptic terminals. If the neuron is died due to any reason, any disease, the sterocyte will proliferate and fill the space that was previously occupied by neurons and this process is called replacement filiosis. Now come to oligodendrocytes. This is an oligodendrocyte. They have small cell bodies and few delicate processes. They are frequently found in rows along myelinated nerve fibers because their function is to myelinate the nerve fiber or exon. Keep in mind that they form myelin only in central nervous system because in the papal nervous system, Schwann cells have that duty. Keep in mind that we are just learning the neuroglial cells of central nervous system. And what is the use of myelin? Myelin provides the exon with an insulating coat. So that greatly increases the speed of nerve conduction along these exons. Oligodendrocytes also surround the cell bodies. But here they are thought to influence the biochemical environment of neurons. Because unlike exons, cell bodies are not myelinated. Third group of neuroglial cells is microglial cells. In fact, embryologically, they are not related to nervous system. They are derived from macrophages outside the nervous system. They are smallest of the all neuroglial cells and are found scattered throughout the nervous system. They closely resemble to connective tissue macrophages, but they migrate into nervous system during fetal life and reside there all over the life. They increase in number in the presence of damaged nervous tissue as in Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease. Mostly they are inactive and that's why they are called resting neuroglial cells. 
but in inflammatory brain disease they become activated they migrate to the side of lesion and here they proliferate and become phagocytic and destroy the microorganism by engulfing it fourth group of neuroglia is ependymal cells these cells line the cavities of the brain and those cavities neuroanatomically are called ventricles we will learn about them in detail in coming videos now just know the brain has a network of communicating cavities that are called ventricles ventricles are filled with the csf and they produce csf by these ependymal cells CSF stands for cerebrospinal fluid. Cerebrospinal fluid is very important in protecting and supporting brain. It acts as shock absorber, cushions the brain, reduces the effective weight of the brain and spinal cord, provides the nutrients to the brain, and assists the removal of the waste products. So these cells line the cavities of the brain and the central canal of spinal cord. These cells have cilia that are often motile. Cilia are short microscopic cell like structures. Is yes, there are cilia in respiratory system and those cilia move microbes and debris up and out of the airways. But here the cilia of the ependymal cells contribute to the movement of cerebrospinal fluid. So ependymal cells use these cilia to circulate the cerebrospinal fluid all over the ventricles of the brain and central canal of the spinal cord means all over the cavities of the CNS. The ependymal cells also have microvilli. Microvilli are finger-like membrane protrusions that increase the body surface area of the ependymal cells. These microvilli allow them to reabsorb the cerebrospinal fluid. So, ependymal cells produce and reabsorb the cerebrospinal fluid. Now, these ependymal cells can be divided into three groups: ependymocytes, tenocytes, and choroidal epithelial cells. Ependymocytes line the ventricles and the central canal of the spinal cord. Now you will think that I said ependymal cells line the ventricles and if ependymocytes also line the ventricles, what do those two other groups do? We will be just discussing. So these are ependymocytes which are lining the ventricle. This is cerebrospinal fluid that is filled in that cavity and this is neural tissue outside the cavity and this is blood vessel of the brain. So I think it is so simple that ependymocytes make the lining of the cavities. Four cavities of the brain and one cavity in the spinal cord that is central canal of the spinal cord. Now jump to other group of ependymal cells that is tenocytes. They line the floor of third ventricle over the median eminence of hypothalamus. They have the processes that extend deep into the hypothalamus and these processes have special function we will learn later. This is choroidal plexus, a network of capillaries that is covered by epithelial cells and those epithelial cells are called choroidal epithelial cells and that is the third group of ependymal cells. This is another picture, here is the choroidal plexus. This is the region where most of the cerebrospinal fluid is produced. And that fluid is produced by choroidal epithelial cells. The loose connective tissue and the core of capillaries are surrounded by the modified ependymal cells. So this group of ependymal cells is responsible to produce cerebrospinal fluid. So here is the full picture of brain tissue with neuron and neuroglial cells. These are neurons, microglia, esterocytes, oligodendrocytes. But ependymal cells are not shown here because as I said that they line the cavities of the brain so it is not presented in the tissue here. I hope I have explained all the neuroglial cells of the CNS very briefly. The journey of neuroanatomy is continued till the next video for the harvest.